Hey there, welcome back to Style So Me, and I'm here to update you with some lessons that I have learned this past year with, with running Style So Me patterns. And about a year or so ago, I started creating patterns and selling them on the site, and I sell print copy, copies in limited quantities, and I usually sell out pretty quickly. And then um, I always sell PDF versions of my patterns um, online in the store. So I am going to be talking about just all of the lessons that I've learned. So I think I've done like two videos with like sewing business lessons learned and things like that. But I have even more things to share. And I really, really love sharing these things and seeing your comments because even though even though those are old videos, um, every day I'm still getting comments and I love to reply and just have that interaction with you. So I want to update you on some of those things. So let's go. So number one is don't be afraid to pivot. The thing with pivoting, a lot of people like to stay, no, I'm going to do this. This is my vision. I'm going to stick it out and everything is falling down around you. But I mean, think about it like this. Would you stay in a relationship? with a partner that is just absolutely not working like no you got it gets to a point where you have to pivot you have to be like you know what i love you but this ain't working like i wanted this to work but it's not working i have to pivot i have to move on to something else and you have to treat your business the same and even less emotional than you know a personal relationship the thing is is that out of all the books that i've read and podcasts that i've been listening to Many successful entrepreneurs have pivoted from their original ideas and they have also had multiple attempts at businesses that have been successful or maybe they ended those businesses with some lessons learned. I don't necessarily want to call it failures, but let's just say they ended the business relationship with more lessons learned than successes. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I actually did a podcast about this and I have a podcast called Life Unapologetic and um, I will link to that episode in the info box so make sure to look down there if you want to hear more of my thoughts about pivoting. Even Style So Me Patterns was born out of a pivot. My original business was a clothing line for, for tall women and that did not end well for a variety of reasons. And I took the designs that would have been the next collection for that business and I made patterns. So it was a pivot. I didn't walk into, you know, starting Style So Me and was just like, oh, I'm going to start designing patterns. That thought never occurred to me. It, I fell into it. It was a pivot and it's working. So um, just don't be afraid to do that. Now, understand that when it comes to pivoting, I'm not just saying, oh, this is hard. I'm going to give up. No, it's going to be hard, you know, but I'm saying if you've given it your all, your hundred thousand percent and it's just not working, then it's time to maybe mm, click on over here a little bit and try this and see what happens. You know what I mean? Or maybe tilt this way and try something to see what happens. I mean, because at this point, what do you have to lose? Right? So number two is always, always know your costs, your expenses for your business. These costs can range um, farther than just what it costs to make one product, right? It's about your monthly expenses. How much is your website hosting? Um, how much are you paying a year in sewing machine or equipment, whatever your equipment is? How much are you paying in maintenance for that? Um, you know your time like get a very detailed and granular analysis of your finances and look at that at least monthly and the reason you want to do that is because it'll help you determine where you can save because you may not realize how much you're spending it'll also help you say help you realize where you can invest more you're like okay we, we did good we stayed under budget most of the way you know we saw some increase in sales our expenses were level let's ratchet up the marketing budget a little bit you know things worked out these past few months so um, always be very in tune with your expenses another reason that you want to do this is because when it comes to collaborating and partnerships and you know working with influencers and other things like that is um, you need to know what your wiggle room is and 
expect that as a starting brand that you may not have as much wiggle room as someone else who's been around for a few years. And so when you go and you, and this is assuming that your prices are, uh, your prices are where they should be. If you're struggling with pricing, I have a video on that as well. Uh, I'll put that in the info box as well. But assuming your prices are where they should be, then you already know what your profit margin is, then you know how much you can pay an affiliate or how much you can pay an influencer if you can afford to pay them at all, how much you can budget for Facebook ads or whatever the case may be. If you don't know this and you're going into it blind, you could be like bleeding money and have no idea. And then you look up at the end of the month and you're just like, where the heck is my money? Cause you, you're not keeping track of it. You have to really understand that. Number three, this is an old saying, but it is hire slow and fire fast. I have worked with several different contractors over the different um, pattern launches that I've had over the past year or so. It only took one time for me to have the experience of not firing fast enough. And I hated to do it because I felt that I wasn't going to find someone else to, you know, have the like, experience that this person had but I actually found someone better who is like on it and so I just what happened is that the delays and things like that that kept happening cost me money and my deadlines were getting pushed back and it's actually why I launched my first two patterns in the fall when they were supposed to have been launched in the spring like this person put me back so far behind deadline that I launched uh, summer, spring, summer patterns, their sleeveless dresses in the fall. Like, like that, that, listen, hire slow and fire fast. Don't be um, so pressed to find someone that you don't properly screen and don't keep putting up with bull because you think that you can't find someone else because you can. You're just gonna have to do a little legwork. So about hiring friends and family, I personally think that that is a no-no for me. You do what you like, I do what I like, and I don't hire my friends or family. This is just lines that I don't want to cross. Aaron the friend is different from Aaron the boss. I'm very deadline driven. And now that I have had some experiences working with several different people, some that have gone well, some that have not gone well, then I, I know the feeling of having to have a conversation of this isn't working and we need to part ways. And so having to do that, and most recently um, with someone that I thought was gonna work out very well and it just, it just didn't, I was glad that I can sever that relationship and then I don't have to speak to you anymore. So when it comes to friends and family, I just don't want to get to that point where we have to have an awkward conversation about performance or, or you know, worse come to worse about separating professionally and then things are just weird. So I just don't even fool with it. That's just my personal opinion. I know many family owned businesses are very successful. You have couples that work together, siblings that work together all the time. That's just not my jam. That's just my two cents on it. So number four, don't expect support from your peers, your family, or your friends. And I say this because there are many people who feel that if friends and family aren't sharing posts, if they aren't purchasing, if they aren't liking, commenting, and telling the world about everything, that they're not supporting you. The thing is, is that your friends and family may not be your target audience. And I don't want you to get to the point where you are being a lazy marketer and just sending out emails and posting on Facebook and say, hey, everybody share my stuff and then getting salty when people don't do it. Go out and do the work, learn how to market, learn how to find the people who are going to buy your products and who you are creating them for. And um, people will notice, you know, you may not even see them sharing your stuff or telling their friends about you. You're not around them 24 seven. So don't use um, you know, Facebook and how many times you've liked to share the post of mine or did you like and share from my business page, whatever. Don't use that as a measure of support. Go out and find your people who are going to buy your products 
and focus on getting their trust and um, getting them to talk about your business because that's going to take you way farther than your cousin and them over here. As far as your peers go, I'm going to be fully, I'm always fully transparent. I don't even want to just like slip that disclaimer in here because I don't want you to feel like I haven't been, but your peers cannot support you as much as you expect them to for a variety of reasons. They simply may not like what you have. And when I say peers, I mean people in your industry, um, your fellow bloggers, your fellow, whatever it is you do them. So other people, you know, that do the same thing as you, um, you may not get their support in the way that you thought you would, um, for a variety of reasons. Like I said, they just may not like what you have. They may not be willing to pay the price that you need for it. Um, they could be hating just a little bit. You know, it's a possibility. I'm just being honest because the thing is, is when, when someone has seen you, when you started and they've seen you like grow to what they perceive to be a level of success, you may not, I'll, I'll just say this. You may not get the support that you expect from people who are okay Kiki in with you when you were at the bottom versus when you've gotten some growth and then you notice crickets, you know, or hands are out. So just don't be discouraged by that. Don't take it personally. Take it for what it is, but you know, just keep it moving. Keep it professional. I know um, there has been a couple of people, a couple of sewing bloggers in my, in my niche niche <laughs> who have um, come out with patterns or, or, or have started projects and even I remember one young lady um, she has like prayer pillows and t-shirts and things like that I purchased from them like they didn't have to ask me I purchased from them that's what I do to support and again it goes back to what I say um, about expecting financial support they didn't ask me to do that. I did not get any kind of like kudos for it. That's just what I do. That's what I choose to do for myself. When I see somebody out here getting it and doing it, I want to show my support financially where I can. And so, um, you know, that's just what I do. But don't expect if that's if that's where your heart is. Cool. But don't place those expectations on someone else because you won't be mad, girl. Just telling you, okay? Just don't do it. You continue to show your support the way that you feel and you be true to yourself, but don't expect anything from anybody else, okay? Just spend your time going to find your customer and connecting with them. Number five, I want you to be selective and intentional and strategic about partnerships. I had an opportunity in the past few months to get my patterns into um, two different online retailers and it didn't work out. And as much as I wanted it to work out, it financially did not make sense for me. And the problem is that I'm still so new that my costs are so high that I wasn't able to meet the price that they were willing to pay for my products. And I could have taking an L and hope for that exposure, but I, I already take tons of risk by developing and paying for these products myself. Like I don't have an investor in South Sony Patterns. This is me and my husband's family money going into this. And I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this in my podcast that, you know, South Sony Patterns has been active for a little over a year. I have not paid myself at all. I haven't paid myself at all, so don't think you're going to walk into this, especially when you're manufacturing your own products, um, that you're going to come out to be rich. I, I take the profits that I get and I reinvest. I get better quality paper. I get, you know, um, I, I can order higher quantities of printed patterns and things like that. I can market a little better. I can upgrade some things on the website. Like there's always something to be paid for. So you want to be very strategic and this goes back to what I said about being very aware of your finances. And so with these particular opportunities, um, the explanation, and I know it, it wasn't meant to be mean. I think it was coming more of a, from a place of, well, I don't 
don't think that you have the right expectations about what you're asking for. That's what I think it came from. But the explanation that both companies said to me was to the tune of, well, so-and-so doesn't require what you're asking for. And I'm like, that got nothing to do with me. What your business with someone else has nothing to do with me. And I want you to take that as well, because there are going to be times where people may unintentionally try to guilt you into something that you know isn't right. And when you're very in tune with your finances and what you can take and what you can't, then you'll be able to say, I'm sorry, you know, congratulations for what did what deals you have with this company, but it doesn't work for me. If things change in the future, I'll be happy to reach out. And that's what you're going to have to do. So again, it's not coming from a place of nastiness. It's just a place of knowing what you have to do and what room that you have to work with. Number six, your marketing is more important than your product offerings. So again, I'm really, really talking to those of you who are making, those of us who make our own products. The first reaction is often to just make a whole bunch of products. Like, so you, you scale up slowly, putting a whole bunch of money into products when you have no customer base, no email list, no social media following, um, no like testimonials or not even friends and family who are willing to, you know, pay for your products if, if it's applicable to them, then you don't want to go out and spend all that time and money making products. Uh, you want to get just like enough to like five or six if you're just starting out and then you want to work on marketing and building that brand awareness and it may feel that you are marketing the same products over and over again but to say for instance you you sell like five different types of skirts that you make change up the fabrics you know add you know it may have a pleated you may have a pleated skirt change up the pleat size you know make it a high low skirt use a few different pattern choices you can really mix and match these things to make it feel like you have a larger um, product catalog than you actually do it's just you know adding options variants colorways and things like that to make customers feel like oh okay let me come in here and look around and see what's going on but again know your numbers and don't always think that adding more products is the solution to slow sales your solution to slow sales is more marketing number seven is connect with people who have a similar business model but who are, who is not direct competition to you the reason i say this is because you want to have someone who understands the type of business that you have and kind of like their business buddy to kind of bounce some things off of like we just freely pass information and resources back and forth to each other because there's that not that subconscious feeling of am i talking too much find your business bestie somebody that's not in competition with you but has a similar business model number eight is create more than you consume this is a phrase that i like to say I coined, but I don't think I did. I, I'm not that original, but <laughs> create more than you consume. And so when I'm talking about this, um, my thoughts go to being an influencer or a blogger versus a, um, a store. If you want to be a store, then you need to be more intentional about creating content that amplifies your store, your products, your brand, your message. If you are an influencer, then you are going to create things that are owned by multiple brands because you are trying to get your message spread to anybody that is relevant. And so I would say an influencer is more broad in their coverage of, of creativity and then a store is more narrow. So it's just different lanes of a focus and once you identify where you want to be then this will help you create more than you consume because if you are if you want to be a store but you're out here spending time and money blogging on other people's stuff then you are a consumer you are consuming other people's things instead of focusing on building your own stuff vice versa if you want to be um 
an influencer and you want to work with multiple brand campaigns, but you are not out here showing love to other brands and posting and doing things, you know, for free sometimes, because that's what you got to do when you start, um, then you're not going to have as much influence across the board because you can't be a selfish influence. You got to show love wherever you can show love. Okay. So just kind of pick which lane you want to be and then set some goals from there. If you're going to be a store, then you may have to be like, oh, I really want to, you know, blog about this other store. But think about all the time that you're taking to create content for somebody else that does nothing to add to your bottom line. So think about that. So our last tip number nine is to build in some accountability for the days when you just don't feel like doing anything. This is especially true for those of us who have another source of income and like a full-time job or whatever the case may be and you're just like I don't have to do this like I'm tired I'm just gonna go get some Cheetos and sit on the couch and watch Netflix for the next four hours like I get it I told you at the beginning of this when I needed a break I took several months off to recharge so I get it but you are gonna have to still stay in tune with your goals when it gets to a point where you just I can't do this like I'm not motivated and I think the message that's being passed around right now is that it's going to always be, oh, I'm boss mode, I'm boss girl, whatever the case may be. And I'm going to always want to do this. I'm going to always be passionate about this. No, there are some times where I have thought like I could sell all of this crap and not miss it at all. Like I have been over it. I'm telling you, by the time I finish producing a pattern and getting it out, by the time it hits um, the store and is live, I'm over it. I never want to sell that pattern ever again because by the time that you see it on sale, I have made that pattern at least seven times. Like I'm over it. The testing process, the getting the samples ready for photography, the blog posts, all of that. Like I don't want to see it child. So there are going to be days and it's okay for you to admit that. Don't let social media make you feel like you have to be super pumped and excited about your business all the time because that's not, it's just not the, the case. You're not going to be happy about it all the time. Even, you know, in your, your regular job or whatever it is that you do outside of your business, there are going to be days where you might like your job and you like the people that you work with, but you just don't feel like going. You just want to crawl in sick and stay in bed and eat pizza and just chill. You know, it's going to be the same way for your business. So um, write down your goals, write them down frequently and do a vision board. Do whatever it is that you need to do to stay in tune with whatever purpose that you think that you need to fulfill because you're going to need it. OK, so I want to just give you permission to feel those feelings of, oh, my God, I need a break. But I also want to give you a kick in the ass to say, all right, now that you've felt those feelings, now that you've taken your break, what is the next move? All right. With that being said, this is this is the end of my list, but I mentioned that I do have a podcast a lot called Life Unapologetic, and I want to get your thoughts because this is something that I would have normally posted on my podcast, but there's something about podcasting that I don't care for that I'm getting on YouTube with you is the engagement. I love seeing your comments and answering your questions and thumbs upping and just hearing you and getting your feedback on everything and hearing about your experiences that I don't get to do as much on, on a podcast. So um, I just also want to know your thoughts. Do you want me to do more um, business videos, um, you know, when it comes to content for creators? If you would be interested in me moving that content from the podcast to YouTube, let me know. If you prefer that it stays on a podcast because you can listen to it on the go, let me know. I'm asking you because I can't decide what you want me to do. And uh, just kind of let me know in the comments. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and maybe next year I will do another set of lessons learned and share that with you. So I will see you in the next video.